Coming up today on Houston Life, looking for a good book to enjoy this holiday season? We've got four winter reads that are worth staying in for. Then we're taking you inside the newest Draper James located in the Galleria. Find out how Hollywood A-lister Reese Witherspoon is bringing her southern style to our closet. Plus, Sing 2 is one of the hottest family movies of the season. Lauren Kelly sat down with one of the stars of the film, Nick Kroll. Hear what he's saying about playing an animated character. And it's the newest cocktail and patio bar in the Heights. Find out what Highline Park is serving up for the holidays. All of that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, December 21st. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. Happy winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, officially winter. And this is great news because starting tomorrow, that means the days start getting longer once again. It, just perfect timing for our summer heat that's going to be coming up. <laughs> At least this morning felt like winter. Listen, if you have just arrived in Houston for the holiday week, buckle up. Buckle up because <laughs> on Christmas Day it's going to be 80 plus degrees, right? It seems so strange, but I guess that's why we live here in the south, but right? Think about all the people who celebrate Christmas in the southern hemisphere though, right below the equator? Right. I mean, for them it's totally normal to celebrate in the sunshine. And since today is officially our first day of winter, in the northern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere, it's officially the first day of summer. Yeah, that's right. Backwards like, day. Like if Today's you backwards if you day. lived in Australia or South Africa, <laughs> like happy summer to all of you. So um, I was doing some research. I think okay. this is so fascinating. So winter solstice, it officially became winter here in Houston at 9:59 a.m. today. Okay. And in Helsinki, Finland, get this: the sunrise happened this morning at 9:23 a.m. Sunset was at 3:12 p.m. Wow. Hold on, let me keep going though. In Nome, Alaska, they'll get just three hours, 54 minutes yeah. of very weak sunlight. And get this, <laughs> if you live in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, it's inside the Arctic Circle, you don't even see a single ray of sunlight yeah, today. Darkness. It is dark all day long. I think that's so fascinating. It really is fascinating. I've never been uh, to those places that you mentioned, and I feel like those are bucket list places, especially on a day like today, yeah. where you you know you spend a good 24 hours without seeing the sun, which is so strange. Yeah, I had some friends get married up like way far north in Canada, and they saw the Northern Lights. It was really incredible. Yeah. I still want to take my mom to do that. It's funny too that uh, sometimes I think when like the days are getting shorter versus the days are getting longer, people sometimes get confused. And we chatted about this sort of like during daylight saving time because I, my mom tells me the story when she was growing up in her small town in Utah, <laughs> people like when daylight saving time went into effect, this lady was like, oh, this is great. I, I can now pick up my laundry on time. And another neighbor was like, oh, this it's fantastic. We're going to have longer days now. I can get to the post office on time. Because it extended their day. But it didn't, no. Right, it didn't, it didn't. really. No, the t we still have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. We just have fewer daylight hours it's in sort of the like dead of winter. That concept that we always say that, uh, you know, I'll make up my sleep. I'm making up for lost sleep. You never, we never do that. We never can. But I no. don't experts say that if you, if you are really exhausted, you should sleep all weekend because you can't actually catch up. I think that's a myth that you can't. I think it, it's a myth that you can Oh, okay. I don't know, but huh. what I, uh, it's interesting. I love when we disagree. Well, it's not really a disagreement because I don't know who's right if we're both right. I don't have any idea. All I know is I'm always tired and it's dark outside early. <laughs> but tomorrow the days will get longer. Okay, so let's talk about this. Do you ever have, you know, checked baggage issues? Maybe your bag doesn't arrive or there's Ugh. always some sort of horror stories connected with that. And we try not to. to I know you're general. good. Yeah. I, I can't. I'm not a very good carry honor. Is that a word? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> It my is word. Now. <laughs> I'm not I'm a horrible packer anyway. Just just so anyway, if you're like me and you're thinking, oh my gosh, everybody's traveling now anyway, hopefully your plans are still in place. Well, we've got some tips to make sure that you're the first to get your trek checked luggage. Oh. The very first ones. You know, like there's those people that just like you you wait hours. You wait for forever your and your bag never comes. Yeah. Wait, so you have tips to help our bags yes, come out listen, first? And I I'm winning for this one because I didn't even I wasn't trying to do this, but I'm this is the number Number one tip. Okay. Be the last person to check in. Oh, oh. Yeah. 
You know me, I'm never early. I'm always late. So this pays off when you're checking your bag. We're usually down to the wire, too. The idea of is, is your bag is last on the airplane, then maybe it's going to be first off. Exactly. Oh, okay. uh, that's what they're saying. That's what hmm. the experts are saying. Okay. The next one is ask for a fragile sticker. Now, I'm going to think that that's just not the right thing because I feel like sometimes if people see that, they're just going to throw it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Have you seen the know. way they throw those bags around? I, whatever. Yeah. So um, check your bag at the gate is the next one. Uh -oh. I mean, if you can get that giant suitcase past security <laughs> and then you've got to deal with that line and people giving you horrible looks, you know, with your extra large suitcase. Mm. Oh, I'm just checking at the <laughs> gate. Um, you could join a frequent flyer club or book first or business class. So oh, I want to yeah, fly just with you. First class. I want to fly with you. Will you get my ticket too? So those are the tips. Or just be like me, be notoriously late, and you're the last bag checked. There you go. I think the fragile sticker idea. That's Fragile -y. interesting. <laughs> yeah, you could just order some of those and stick it on. <laughs> hey, how about this? So right now, our delivery, you know, companies and workers, oh, they are overtime, going right? overtime. And you were explaining to me how some of these large companies like Amazon, they're actually hiring people to just yeah. like drive their own cars to make deliveries. Yes, I've seen them all over. I mean, people are just driving their own cars because there's not enough people to make the routes to get these packages delivered on time. Yeah, for sure. So it, it takes an army, right? Here's the thing, though. So I didn't realize that there are all kinds of annoying things that customers do to actually slow down delivery drivers throughout their day. Oh. On already long enough days, right? Yes. We need to be helping our, our delivery workers move, move swiftly. So a, a bunch of uh, delivery drivers were polled, and they were asked the question, what are some of the most annoying things that customers do to slow you down. You know what the most common question they get when they are handing over a package? What? What's in the box? <laughs> Well, you ordered it. Well, that's what they say. You ordered it. And here's the thing. Your delivery driver... Doesn't know. They don't know what's in the box. They don't. I mean, unless it's a very common item, like, or maybe it's a, a box that shows what the contents are. They don't know what's in the box. <laughs> don't ask. And sometimes people refuse to take a package. So they'll they'll see a delivery person, and they re they'll refuse to, to answer the doorbell. And if the person's waiting for you, they probably want a signature, right? Right. Right? But if people are not expecting a package, they won't go to the door. And the driver's like, hello, I need your, this I can is see to you. you. you we're making eye contact. And I oftentimes, <laughs> um, people just forget what they ordered. I don't know who would do that. Uh, that's, I don't know <laughs> whoever would do that. Also, keep your dogs in a separate room. The number of times drivers get bitten or nipped oh, at by so-called friendly dogs. They don't want your dog jumping all over. Also, be sure your house numbers are visible. Yes. Turn on outdoor lights, especially during the winter days, which are shorter, winter solstice. Um, clear snow and don't answer the door naked. That's a tip. Did you add that in or was that actually on the list? I, d I did not add that in. That did that happen to you? Did you do that? <laughs> I'm reading a list of things okay. that the delivery uh, drivers or of the United What's States of here? America, things that they don't want you to do. Lock now up your dogs. Now would be a good time for some video. Turn on the outdoor lights. Don't answer the door naked. Yes. That was one of them. Well, that's interesting. Well, it happens more often than one might think. Do you really? know any delivery drivers? Ask them. No, but I will ask them next time, but then I'm afraid if I'm going to slow them down for conversation. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Delivered a package to someone who... Never mind. I'm Never mind. That I did the other day. Um, <laughs> we, you know, a lot of people leave snacks and drinks and stuff for uh, the delivery drivers and post postal service people. That and, is very nice. Um, but I didn't leave it out this time. Um, but I, I offered Diet Coke, a coffee. I mean, it was, yeah, we had a very nice chat. Did not ask him about number five on the list, though. That is so nice. You know what else people do all the time? They'll hand like a UPS or a FedEx driver a stack yeah. of envelopes with stamps on them. Don't do that. And say, hey, can you mail these? Can Don't you mail these that. for me? And when they explain, actually, we're not the U.S. Postal Service, we're, you know, FedEx or UPS, people get irate. Oh, my word. Yeah. Take your stuff to the mailbox. <laughs> Don't give it to them. Mm -mm. I know. No. people. Or get a little uh, clothespin and just put that on your mailbox, leave it right there, and the right person will take it. You know, you outgoing mail. Clip it to your mailbox. Oh. You've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> The no. right person will take it. The male person. Yeah, but what if someone else takes it? Well, that's a chance you take. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, it, it, it happens. It does. It, it does. does. But, but be nice to each other this holiday season. <laughs> and, and don't answer the door naked. And Still be kind to, to your delivery drivers. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is this shirt.
the wearable item one fast food giant is giving that you may want to snag. Not this one. Oh, I mean, not you that can have shirt. This, one. this can one's I have good that? too. That is a nice shirt. That's nice. Okay, also later, are you looking for a winter read? We've got the four books you'll probably want to cozy up with this season. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Don't go away. Welcome back. Okay, this story, I literally did not think it was true, but it is. So McDonald's and Mariah Carey, they've got like a collab, collab happening. Okay. Um, and this is, I'm going to read my notes here. So there is a Mariah menu at McDonald's and there's free daily deals on their app, which Derek, I know you're a fan of the McDonald's app. Mm -hmm. um, it's a dollar purchase now through December 24th. The t-shirts you get a t-shirt. It's going to be delivered in February. Now today uh, they're giving away Mariah t-shirts free to the first 10,000 customers who ordered a sausage McMuffin with egg on the app. Wow. Yeah, do you see all that stuff there? It's great. And the shirt features Mariah eating McDonald's. <laughs> Hold on. What? Yeah. She it features her eating McDonald's? She's eating it. I can't, I'm looking at a very small screen right now, so I can't really, oh, I see. She's got like a whole value meal. Yeah. Her. The, this oh. special launched on December 13th at participating restaurants nationwide and continues through Christmas Eve. Wow. Okay. Hey, can we get a go back on something though? Does Mariah Carey have a new album that I somehow missed? I don't know. Like a holiday album? Because remember this during Thanksgiving when she took, when she was like smashing the pumpkins and saying like, it's not time yet. And then she smashed them and the tease was sort of like, oh my gosh, is she finally releasing a new Christmas album after all these years? But I think that was so, once Thanksgiving was over, it's her number one hit, All I Want for Christmas. Oh, maybe. So no one knows, no one can confirm right now whether there's new music. Maybe one of our viewers, maybe one of our viewers can let us know. I was just curious about that. I wondered if I missed it because that's quite possible. It, maybe. Huh. Unconfirmed. Okay. Well, I think the t-shirt idea is very cool. I very, want Very one. nice. I want one. Okay. Well, listen, speaking of holiday music, okay. it's been a while since we've played one of our favorite games. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But before we do, why don't we get to our question of the day? What is your guilty pleasure during the holiday season? Some of you have already responded on our Houston Life Facebook page. Let's get to some of those comments now. Les Leslie writes in, Hallmark movies one after the other. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, we were laughing earlier. I watched a, a film called A Very Corgi Christmas. And we hear from one of our producers, it's a slow starter, but it, it ends up very well. You know, they're all like romantic comedies. When a puppy's involved, so it's even cuter. Uh, Renee writes in, Christmas tree, Little Debbie cakes. I've probably had six boxes. They're right, right, right when you walk in the door. They're right with all the holiday Yum. stuff. My kids like those too. I love a Little Debbie. And Isara writes oh. in, sitting in my fave chair, drinking eggnog, soaked with crown in my comfy jammies with my fave throw, binging Netflix or Christmas movies. Oh my okay. Okay, wow, that looks like a good time. Very, very nice. It looks great, and I know you love a good eggnog. Oh, I love eggnog. It's it so is, good. it's so good. Okay, join the conversation over on the Houston Life Facebook page. We're going to share more of your comments a little bit later on in the show. Okay, so now the Whisper Game. Since Mariah Carey has one of the best Christmas songs around, we decided it would be perfect to bring back our Whisper Game, and this is the holiday edition. So we have two sets of headphones separately. You will play music and put on your headphones while I read you some clues, all right? Okay, am I, do I do headphones Why first? Why don't you put on the headphones first okay. and I'll read the, right, the clues go. for you. All right, hang on. Okay, and play it, play it along at home with us. This is always a fun one. Okay, hang on, I gotta put the music on loud. I can actually hear your music, okay, so I know it's loud. Okay, here is your first phrase. The 12 days of Christmas. Say that again? Do you wanna make a guess? No. The 12 days of Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. The 12 merry days Christmas. Of Christmas. <laughs> it's a, it's the 12 days of Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas. Ding, ding, ding. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Oh. My turn. Okay. I'm going to listen to some Gaga and Grande. How about that? God rest you, merry gentlemen. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Song titles, song titles. I think it's pretty easy, okay. easier than lyrics. Okay. A Little Town of Bethlehem. 
O little town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem? A little, what? O little town of Bethlehem. It looks like you're saying something, Bethlehem. Of this town, Bethlehem, I don't know. Is it a song title? O little town of Bethlehem? Uh, o little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Is it? I don't know. Okay, well, I think uh, your guesses are exhausted. You can take them off. O little town of Bethlehem. Oh. Okay. You know that song, right? I don't know. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Okay. I mean, you don't know that song, Kat? Oh, my gosh. No. You guys go to church growing up? Yes. It's like a common holiday song. Um, okay. Up on the housetop. Up on the housetop. I have a feeling he looked at these. I, I nice. absolutely did not. I okay. never cheat oh, wait. on television. Hang on. At least one co-host doesn't. Um, jolly Old St. Nicholas. Something St. Nicholas. Jolly Old St. Nicholas. Jolly Old St. Nicholas. There you go. There you go. And do I have one more? Do I have one more? I th this is very loud. <laughs> really loud. Okay. Okay, you have one more. Okay. Uh, okay, it's on. Here we come a caroling. One more time. Here we come a caroling. Here we come a caroling. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. What can you I say? You smoked me. I, I can read lips. Yeah. I was the last one. I was trying to do this. <laughs> Just trying not to say anything, Just trying to do that. Good times. It was fun. Was I fun. love the whisper game. It is fun. Um, okay, still ahead. I'm super excited about this story today. Reith Witherspoon, uh, she's bringing her signature Southern style right here to Houston. And that's what you're wearing. More on that in just a bit. But first, Joe Sam is getting a taste of the holidays at Highline Park. Hi, Joe. This is a brand new cocktail bar, huh? It really is not even two weeks old that we're talking about this here at Highline Park. It really is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Take a look at all of the gifts that we have. We're going to be talking about these to entertain your family and friends with for the holiday season when Houston Life returns. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back here to Houston Life. You know, we talk about Houston's diverse food scene all the time, and there's a new restaurant, new upscale patio bar that has now joined forces with all of the other diverse and amazing restaurants that we have out here. We're talking about Highline Park, and I'm here with Tyler, the co-owner, to give us some information about it because it's in such a central part of town. A lot of people love it. It's super convenient for them, and it's absolutely beautiful out here. Absolutely. So we're located right in the Heights, uh, right next to Lawrence Park and the Hike, Hike and Mike Trail. Uh, at the new MKT uh, development, mm -hmm. um, along with Dagama and uh, several other restaurants and shops. So, um, like Joe said, we're right on the trail. We're super easy to get to uh, off North Shepherd, um, you know, located in the heart of the Heights. So. It really is because you see a lot of families coming out here really having a good time. They can have their fun right there at the park, walk their dogs, and then they can come pop in right here for a good refreshing bite. And we're going to get into Absolutely. those bites right now, right? Yes. Take a look at what we have, you guys. Let's walk on over to my favorite part, the food, because this is what we're talking about for the holidays. We have it set up nicely. Kind of walk us through some of these here because people can see these on their tables as they appetizers for the holidays, correct? Absolutely. So when you're over here, you know, shopping or uh, riding your bike, uh, you know, you can stop in for uh, our queso to start off with. Mm -hmm. We've got some bang bang shrimp. Uh, also, uh, some of our wings that are absolutely awesome. Uh, and then if you're looking for something a little bit heavier, we have our chicken sandwich and our Highline Smash Burger. Now, Tyler, you kind of passed up the wings a little bit. You got to give a little <laughs> bit more spotlight to these <laughs> wings. Take a look at this. Not Absolutely. your average type of wing. This is kind of like the chicken lollipop. Absolutely. Right? Oh, it is beautiful. And we talk about this place being at its new. Tell people what's yeah. the concept of Highline Park and why did you guys decide to bring it here to Houston? So uh, the way we put it is we're an elevated sports bar. Uh, obviously, we want to do really uh, great food along with uh, some great local craft beers and uh, great cocktails. That's what we're here for. Mm. Uh, and speaking of cocktails, we've got a super good cocktail that we're going to do with y'all for just in time for the holiday season. Oh, my goodness. We talked about the cocktails. I'm going to need some of that to wash this 
amazing chicken lollipop. That's what I'm going to call it. Down with. <laughs> this is so good, Tyler. And I know a lot of people are going to be excited to come out here and check out this new spot in the Heights. Absolutely. Don't go anywhere because he's going to be showing me how to make that cocktail and showing everybody at home how they can probably recreate it for their family and friends for the holiday season. Courtney Absolutely. and Derek, check this out. Go ahead and get you one, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. We're going to send things back to you guys as we devour these lollipops here. It right. is such a great spot. And, and by the way, right there off the bike trail, as Joe, you mentioned, but there's also a ton of parking, beautiful art everywhere, so it's a must visit for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. We'll see you in a bit, Joe. Well, coming up, the sequel every kid has been waiting for, Sing 2. It's in theaters just in time for the holidays. Lauren Kelly chats with one of the stars of the film. Plus, we'll get a check of what is coming up on KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock, including how you could be missing out on your favorite holiday cocktail this year. Uh-oh. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Tuesday. And let's get to more of your comments on today's question of the day. We asked, what is your guilty pleasure during the holiday season? Evelyn writes in, just love picking the candy canes off the tree, <laughs> LOL. Valerie writes in, Bailey's in my coffee in the morning. Oh, man, that <laughs> is a really good one. That can be dangerous. Kia writes in, making my husband pose with pictures with a dog in matching PJs. I think that is so sweet. Those pictures never get old to me. Well, totally. And it's always fun to look back on those memories, even yes. if in the moment it feels a little bit silly, but I think that's a very nice tradition. It's super fun. Okay, let's check in with Andy, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up mm. at the top of the hour. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, Hi. I think anything with double chocolate in it, I'm always game for Me too. The nice. Okay, peanut brittle. Ooh, oh, my that is yes. good. Nightly thing. Jesse's grandmother makes it, mm -hmm. and she sends it to us. Oh, my gosh. Let's just say Jesse never gets any. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. <laughs> I also love turning the fireplace on, even, if even, it's, when, it's, it, even when it's 80. <laughs> really, I just turn the AC down. <laughs> I'm the Cinnabon guy, you know. Oh. Uh, on Christmas morning, anything with, with cinnamon mm. and sugar and butter. Yeah. Um, you got to have, have a really fattening breakfast on Christmas morning. Oh, yeah. I think. Tis the season, right? <laughs> Goes with the eggnog. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay, I have a, a nice one for us today. It's going to be another sort of winter-ish evening, but that's about as good as it gets. Clear skies out there. Temperatures are in the low 60s, so it's been a really beautiful afternoon. It's going to continue to be that high pressure is in place, but it's going to be moving off to the east. That means a southerly wind and a big warm-up. But tonight, first of all, Hank... Hank's tongue is as wide as my tie, and my tie is wide. <laughs> i got to tell you, he's adorable. Temperatures in the 60s for that dog walk. By the time we get to 8, we're in the low 50s, and we continue to go right down into the low and mid-40s overnight. So that's what we'll wake up to. Tomorrow, up to about 70, but look at this. For Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we're, at, we're talking records. Tank tops, some great biking weather, if nothing else, on Saturday. And i got to tell you, this continues into next week. I'll have your 10-day coming up at 4. But jackets tonight, one more coolish day tomorrow with a high of only 70. And then the sizzle really starts to set in here. So get ready for it. Yeah, Santa's going to be sweating it out on uh, Christmas yeah. Day so, here. One yep. more day that I can justify having the fireplace on. Without there you yelling. go. <laughs> All right, Frank, thank you. Here's a look at what's coming up today at 4 p.m. on KPRC 2 News. The COVID-19 testing lines are packed with people ahead of Christmas. Just yesterday, Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo raised the threat level from yellow to orange amid the rising number of Omicron cases. We'll have the latest on the rising number of COVID cases and how people are preparing. Plus, a small plane collided with a paraglider near the Brazos River in Fort Bend County. Officials say the UPS carrier plane took off from George Bush Intercontinental Airport this morning. The pilot of the plane is the only reported death. KPRC2 investigator Robert Arnold will be live with the very latest coming up at 4 o'clock. Also ahead, holiday celebrations may be running dry. That's because alcoholic beverages are in short supply. And it all goes back to the backups at ports like the one in Long Beach, California. Coming up at 4, the silver lining that some wine and beer stores are sharing with their customers. But something tells me Derek and Courtney stocked up a long time ago. <laughs> no doubt. So y'all were coming over. No. We've got our reserves. We have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even think about we're gonna coming over. We're going to raid the stockpile. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see it for. Okay. Well, fans of the hit animated series Sing will be happy to hear the sequel Sing 2 hits all the same notes. Uh, it sure does. Lauren Kelly recently had the chance to sit down with Nick Kroll to find out how this movie is much more than just musical numbers. 
I'll give you three weeks to get this show up and running. I won't let you down, sir. Better not, or I'll throw you off the roof. <laughs> Mick, I'm freaking out a little bit. I am such a huge fan. I, I love the movie Sing 2. I love that you're back for the second film. What got you hooked in for the sequel? Uh, well, Lauren, what got me hooked in was a contract where I'd signed on to do multiple films <laughs> when I signed my first deal. Um, but no, the, the, but the reality is I, I really do love these movies. Uh, uh, I was I enjoyed the recording process on the first one a ton, but then when it came out, I was really blown away by the the scope of it and the excitement and the joy of it. And then um, and then to be able to hear from people, friends, and 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 audience members that I didn't know at all, and how much the movie uh, Im impacted them, and how much their kids loved it. it. All of those things made me very excited to be a part of it. And then the second one, I think they've done an even better job of heightening it and, and taking what worked about the first one and blowing it out in, on a much bigger scale. It is. It's back. It's bigger than ever. The cast is amazing. McConaughey, Reese Witherspoon, yourself, Taryn Egerton, Scar Joe's in there, Bono's in there. You play Gunter. I have to comment on the accent. Where does Gunter actually hail from? Uh, Gunter hails from, uh, actually, uh, do you know um, Texarkan? You know, right where Texas meets Arkansas, uh, that's where he's from originally. You know, I thought, that I thought I was picking up on those Texarkana notes. I, I really thought that I heard that in the film. Yeah. You, you said you spoke about the production. The music in the film is just amazing. Did you get to record your own songs? Are you actually singing in this film? I am actually singing to the great dismay of everyone involved. Uh, I am actually singing. We can't wait for our Houston Life viewers to catch the film. Out on December 22nd, Sing 2. It's a wonderful film. Nick, thank you so much for your time and happy holidays. You too. Thanks so much. The first one is such a cute film. I can't wait to see the second. My nieces are obsessed. It's a great one. And I love that Nick was like, it's in my contract. I just had it's to. It's just, you know, I signed the dotted line. That's the way it goes. <laughs> it is great for the whole family. Sing 2 is in showing in theater starting tomorrow. I know this was a big anticipation, so it's great to see. Yeah, and tomorrow's Wednesday. Yeah. Tomorrow's Wednesday. So you could get a jump on your holiday movie itinerary. How about that? For sure. Sounds good to me. Well, coming up, if you want to curl up with a good book while the weather is so cold outside, check it out. That's Cindy Burnett on your screen right there. We're going to have a chat with her. She has got four titles that are perfect for the holiday season, Courtney. And a lot of us during the pandemic, you know, we haven't been reading. So it's time to pick that book back up. Definitely. Going to get some good recommendations there. And one of the newest stores in the Galleria, I'm taking you to look through Reese Witherspoon's clothing store, Draper James. All of that and more when Houston Life returns. Okay, December 21st. It is officially winter, and when the temperatures finally get chilly here in Houston, why not curl up with a good book? Cindy Burnett is host of a podcast called Thoughts from the Page, and she's here now with her top four book picks for the winter season. Cindy, it's great to have you here on Houston Life. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We were just chatting during the break that reading for a lot of people is something that maybe we don't prioritize, we don't have time for or make time for, but reading a great Great book is really a gift we can give ourselves. Absolutely, it's the best self care there is. To takes you away, get, teach you something new, meet new people, all of it in one package. Yeah, it relieves a bit of stress, right? When you For can sure. escape from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we mentioned the podcast. Before we get to these individual book titles, though, tell us a little bit more about uh, how you're involved in the community because you are a, a very busy person. <laughs> I do like to read a lot and talk about all things books. So I have the podcast. I also have a literary salon here in Houston where we interview authors. I talk to groups about books. I write two articles for the Buzz magazines. So I kind of do all sorts of stuff. Okay, that's super yeah. cool. And there you are doing your podcasting yeah. thing. I know you record, you said a couple days per week. So yeah. thank you for doing that. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Good. Well, let's get to the books, uh, starting with a book that you recommended for me. This is a book that you, <laughs> you recommend reading curled up under a blanket. Absolutely. This is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams, and it is a book about books. 
a book about the importance of reading and where it can take you like all over the world, gives you something to talk about, escape from loneliness, escape from a bad situation at home. So it's two people who befriend each other in an unlikely relationship, become kind of creating your own family, and they work their way through eight classics, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, Life of Pi, a bunch of different books, and they learn from them, they talk about them, and they also kind of learn to recover from the grief that they're both experiencing. Wow, To Kill a Mockingbird, too. I, f I feel like it's been 30 years since I've read that, way back in school. And you were recommending, Cindy, that if it's been a while since we've picked up a book, this might be a great book to start with. Absolutely, because it is all about reading and community and other books, and there's just so much in it. Reconnecting with the page. Yeah. We do love that. Okay, a book to read on a rainy day. Uh, this would have been great last weekend. <laughs> it would have. And I'm so excited about it because he's a sixth generation Texan. So Taylor Moore is Downrange is the first in the series. The second one will be out this summer. And Garrett Cole, not of pre Astros, you know, Garrett Cole, but <laughs> Garrett Cole, a DEA agent, uh, was in Afghanistan, ends up overseeing this kind of drug cartel. They end up murdering a village. He saves one of the boys, brings him back to the high plains of Texas. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's an action packed, like James Bond, but in a book, but more in the Texas high plains. Such a strong sense of place. Really loved Garrett Cole. So, I'm excited to see what will be next for him. But it's just one of those you will not stop reading until you My finish. My goodness. It. Yeah. Okay, dramatic storyline. So, the rainy Very, day, yeah. it's a good one to read exactly. on a rainy day because we'll you won't be day. able to put it, <laughs> put it down. Okay, for a lot of folks uh, who may or may not be traveling during the holidays, you say a book to take with you on vacation is your third option right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. This is The Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. And it is the, it's historical fiction. So it's the story of Belle da Costa Green. She was J.P. Morgan's personal librarian. She curated a lot of the wonderful things that are part of the Morgan Library today. What's really cool about it was that she was black, but she was passing as white. So this was in the early 1900s, and she could not have done this job if she had, you know, disclosed that she was black. Wow. And so, yeah, it was interesting. She was such a courageous woman, but she was really having to hide her identity the entire time she was doing this amazing job. What an incredible story. And isn't that amazing? And they didn't know till after she died. No yeah, way. No. Okay, that book one day is going to be made into a movie or a series. Absolutely. I have and a feeling just on that. so well done. And it's told from her perspective, which I loved. They really kind of got into her personality and, you know, how she struggled and what she did. And she was incredibly intelligent. So it's oh. wonderful. Okay, that's a great option. I've yeah. loved all three so far. You have a fourth <laughs> one here. This is a book that will keep us reading late into the night. Is that because also this one we won't be able to put down, Cindy? Exactly. And in fact, this one, these Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant is one that I sat down to flip through and I didn't get up till I finished it. So I read it in one sitting. It is absolutely amazing. Probably my favorite book this year. Takes place um, in western Pennsylvania in the mountains. A dad and daughter are living off the grid. You don't know why. They don't have power. They don't have water. They're having to kind of just live off the land. So I was fascinated by that because that is very foreign to <laughs> anything that I could do. But also you don't know what's going on and you really like them as you get to know them, but there's this whole gripping tension and pressure, and it all just builds till this amazing ending. Wow, okay, yeah. well, that's a good little tease right there. It's really a great book. So, Cindy, your podcast, again, is called Thoughts from the Page. Right, Thoughts People from the Page. People can find it anywhere uh, podcasts are, are downloaded. Absolutely. I have a website, too, thoughtsfromapage.com, and then, yes, it's on every single podcast network. So, okay, and yeah. the book salon, very, very cool. Uh, Cindy, thanks so much for stopping by Houston Life. Thanks for the recommendations as well. Thanks for having me. Merry Christmas. Have a fantastic holiday. If you'd like to connect with Cindy, you can look for the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right, why don't we send things over to Courtney, who's been getting a lot of questions, Courtney, about your outfit today. It turns out a popular celeb is behind it. That is right. Hollywood A-lister Reese Witherspoon can do it all, right? Mom, acting, philanthropy, and designer. In 2015, she founded the clothing brand Draper Jane a nod to her southern upbringing and named after her grandparents Dorothea Draper and William James Witherspoon. Draper James has been featured in dozens of magazines on celebs and also has been named Best Shop in Tennessee by Southern Living. And now Houston is home to its newest location. First, I think we need to do a proper cheers and welcome to Houston. Thank you.
this is a new kind of concept for you all because you're in a mall. Absolutely, we're so excited to be here at the Galleria. I have to say that we knew that our Houston brand fans needed us here. They're very, very vocal. They talk to us all the time. And so to bring such a special space to this city is really important to us. So for people walking into this space for the very first time, what's the design vibe? Because kind of the tagline is for Draper James, you can never be too dressed up, right? Right, right. We really believe at the brand that if you look good, you feel good, and then you can go out there in the world and do good, and we really, really do walk that walk, and we talk that talk, and Reese believes that, I believe that, and we see it in our uh, customers as well. You know, they choose um, our line for some of the most important special occasions of their lives. Head designer Catherine Suki joined the brand in 2019 and was handpicked by Witherspoon. She actually was very much a part of the um, candidate selection when I came onto the brand in 2018, and she's continued to be very involved in the design work. So we, we talk often about what's new and next for our brand. Catherine has a long history in the fashion world. She started in ready to wear, but the bulk of her career was designing accessories. I designed for Coach and for Kate Spade, and uh, when Draper James launched uh, a search for the next designer for the brand. I was very lucky to get picked up into that fold and I did my uh, a project for the brand and it was the first time I had sketched ready to wear in 13 years and it was like riding a bike and it felt very natural and especially for this brand I really understand our girl. I really understand Reese's aesthetic and this idea of casual feminine polish and what we like to do in this particular store because our space is just this beautiful throughway is we start with the season that is before us. So you're going to see high holiday garments at the front of the store, then you're going to see some party garments into lounge, and then of course in Houston too with the weather being what it is, we like to have some buy now, wear now pieces as well. Our signature plaid, we bring it back every single holiday season. I'll be taking you over to the Angie plaid in red in a little bit, but somebody who doesn't want to go so high holiday can find the same dress in the beautiful plaid, just recolored. We call this our black watch plaid. It's great with a black shoe, with a black hose, very, very flattering and very, very forgiving. And this too is great for the petite set. It has, even though it's not in petite sizing, it has the shorter sleeve, the shorter hemline, and then the beautiful ease in the smocked bodice as well. So really figure flattering on every single person. You know what I love about this is it's not just for holiday. I can see rodeo season here in Houston. I can see springtime. I mean, put it with a pair of sneakers or even a combat boot, totally. leather jacket. I think it would be super You're cute. my mind. I love it. I love it. <laughs> this is our signature Angie plaid. Our girl loves holiday dressing, and so she will wear the dress, she will wear the apron. We've got a tabletop now where she can really sort of set her tablescape in her dress and just look so adorable for any of her, you know, photo photograph kind of moments. Um, the one thing that I want to mention too is this particular style. We love the idea that it gets a little bit of a flirty sleeve. It's a flutter sleeve. It's signature with a pretty little ruffle and pockets. Winning! <laughs> It's got pockets. <laughs> okay, Catherine, is it try on time? It is. This is one of our favorite looks. You can dress it up or down for the holidays. You will get so much wear out of it. I think this is the one. Okay, so let's try it. I love it. I love it. I really did love it. That store just transforms you. It's a really great space. And Catherine's responsible for designing the first plus size collection for the brand. By the way, the sizes range from extra small to 3X, very size inclusive for the entire brand. She also creates the patterns that you see on the clothing. So she said something like seven weeks, it goes from start to finish by the time she sketches the design, also the prints as well. And that signature Magnolia print will continue with the season of the brand as well, which I think is really great. That Magnolia print is really what they're known for uh, throughout the brand. But as you heard Catherine mention in the piece that the Houston customer has been very vocal. So there's been a lot of shoppers online and they've been basically looking at the zip codes and enough Houston zip codes were represented on their website that they said it makes sense. That's why this was their next location. That's why they opened yes. in the Galleria. Well, and the dress, so that the dress you tried on in the piece, it's that's actually, what you wore for your holiday? 
holiday card? It is what I wore for the holiday card. It's two pieces. I'm wearing the top today along with this amazing velvet suit that's from there as well. Everything is very comfortable and it just is sort of easy breezy, southern charm. You're, and again, Wear the clothes in your closet. If you want to be dressy, be dressy. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really, really is nice. I love it. And by the way, the lounge wear is fantastic. It's some of the best cotton I've ever felt in my life. The robes, the pajamas, everything amazing. Now they just need a men's collection. How about that? <laughs> Welcome to Houston, Jennifer James. Glad to have you here. Why don't we check back in with Joe Sam, who's having a tasty holiday this afternoon at MKT in the Heights. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Hey guys, look who's my drinking buddy today. He just popped on in so that we can take a peek at this peppermint Irish coffee that they have here at Highline Park. We're gonna enjoy this. When we come back, we're gonna tell you how you can actually recreate it at home for your family and friends. Cheers, Houston Life is back in just a few. Welcome back here to Houston Life. We're at Highline Park, the new upscale patio bar here in the Heights, and it is amazing. They have it decked out for the holiday season. And when we talk about the holiday season, we have to talk about the cocktails that you can enjoy with your family and friends. For those who are 21 and above age, I have Tyler back here with me. We mentioned your Irish peppermint coffee. I have it a little bit backwards, but that's what it basically it is, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> the peppermint so, Irish coffee. So you're putting that together for us right now. Tell us how we break this down for those who are looking to make this at home. So it's going to be 1.5 ounces of uh, slain Irish whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, 0.5 of uh, creme de mint, a uh, little bit of Damaris sugar. And this and was just coffee that you just put in there, right? Yes. Uh, and then we're going to top it with our Ooh. house cream and then to, now it's starting to look like the holidays top it all off with our peppermint oh looks absolutely beautiful and now we have to taste right absolutely here we go cheers. cheers to you cheers to everyone at home for the holidays and as I get ready to taste mine I want you to explain Highline Park a little bit more for those who are just joining us and tell us a little bit about the concept you guys have it really ready to go for the holiday season absolutely so we are an elevated sports bar uh, we've got quite a big space <laughs> indoors and then a covered patio on a covered patio uh, with about 1,500 square feet. Uh, so yeah, we're ready for the holidays, ready to serve some cocktails. Uh, and really quickly, you talked to people about those when we showed the food earlier. For those mm -hmm. who are not looking to make all that stress of the holidays and cook at home, how can they get in contact with you guys for catering? Yeah, if you want to get in contact with catering, uh, just email events at highlinepark.htx.com and we'll get you set up. Awesome. All right, yeah. so go ahead and pick that back up while the kids <laughs> are enjoying their hot chocolate at home. Courtney and Derek, this is something for the adults. This is something we would have, right? Absolutely. <laughs> back to you guys for now. All right, cheers. It's a great Great spot, Joe. Yeah, it is beautiful up there. Those drinks look fantastic. After the break, a look at what is coming up on tomorrow's show, including a local legend who is making a list for Houston's East End. Plus, another look at what you had to say about our question of the day. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, Poncho Kloss is coming to town in Houston's East End, a major tradition here. We're going to learn more about the zoot suit wearing local legend and how to help him spread some Christmas cheer. I'm glad he's back at it again. This yeah, time. this guy's incredible. You definitely do not want to miss that. Also, from symbols to customs, how you and your family can celebrate Kwanzaa. We are learning more about this cultural celebration. Kwanzaa, of course, starts later this week and runs uh, until early. January, so we're excited about that. All right, let's now get a final look at your comments, what you had to say about our question of the day. This, of course, we ask every day on our Facebook page. We ask today, what's your guilty pleasure during the holiday season? Can I just add in here everything? Because I feel like I don't have a fill marker. You uh -oh. know what I mean? I overindulge in it all. John writes in spending way too much money for Starbucks holiday lattes. Yeah, you know what? Those can add up for I know, sure. But it's a short season. It's a short season, and if you use the app or the card, then you can get, get a the little points, something right? Back. Yeah, I get the points. Jill writes in peppermint latte. Ooh, I like where you're going with mm -hmm. this, Jill. Peppermint ice cream, yes. chocolate chip peppermint cookies, peppermint covered almonds, <laughs> peppermint anything. <laughs> And cheese. Oh, I like the way you think, Joe. We could be friends for sure. Mark, this was great. Too much. 
eating too much, drinking too much, sitting in a recliner too much. I get it, Mark. Tis the season. It's what we do, right? Tis the season. And you know, my Starbucks tip is, Jill, for you, for the peppermint, even if you just get like a regular drink, have them add a pump or two of peppermint in it. It gives you the little, you know, we're going to need it now because it's going to be like 90 this I weekend. I know, I know. But that's kind of nice, though. It's, it is kind of ni it's nice to be Houstonian. It is nice to be a Houstonian. I just needed a I don't want to put my AC on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day. Oh, my gosh. Over the past two weeks, I bet this happened to you, too. We've had the AC on. We've yeah. had the heat on. We've had the Windows fireplace open. on. Then the AC on again. It's like... I cannot keep up with the changing weather patterns in December here. I know, I know. It's very crazy, but just wait five minutes. It'll change. That's so true. Well, enjoy this lovely day, and thank you so much uh, for spending part of your afternoon with us. That is right. We're going to see you again tomorrow. Let's toss it over to Andy and Christine standing by for the news at 4 o'clock. Hi, guys. I love Jill's comment. It's like everything, 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 dot, 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 cheese. And cheese. Yes. And cheese. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. all year round, though, really. Overindulging is the name you of know, the game. You know, hey. We got to have something, right? Mm -hmm. We have to, otherwise you have no, you know. No, no um, happiness. <laughs> no break in January. Right. Life is short, eat the cheese. Right.